Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some Sid Meier's Civilization Beyond Earth. So this game just came out today, October 24th, 2014. I was thinking that I might wait until I know a little bit more about the game and I'm an expert, quote unquote, but no one's an expert because the game the game's brand new. So we're just going to play. We're going to play the game and uh, I've had you know a fair bit of experience playing Civ 5. It's a very similar type game. Um... We'll play Apollo difficulty, which is uh, apparently... No, 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 not Apollo. Soyuz. Very hard. AI players receive advantages to improve their play. Um, we'll do that. And then map size, let's play on... Apparently small is six players. Maybe we'll play standard. Sounds good. So as, um, as you may be aware, this is a game that was developed by Firaxis, which is the same company that made uh, Civilization V and previous iterations of the game as well. You'll notice just a, a tremendous number of similarities between the two games. They're built with the same engine. It's very evident. Um, but they have revamped a few of the, the different mechanics. And I'm pretty excited about it. I, I think it's basically... It's it's civilization in space. I mean, I mean what, what would you expect? It's civilization beyond Earth. So that's what we're looking at. But let's give it a shot. So we have to designate a sponsor. Uh, we could choose ARC. Covert operations are 25% faster and cost 25% more intrigue. Well, I have no idea what Intrigue is or how it works, but that sounds pretty good. 10% production towards Wonders, 25% worker speed, gain of free technology every 10 virtues. Orbital units stay in orbit 20% longer. The first one launched grants a free technology. Eh, nah. Trade is cool, that's fine. 10% food in growing cities when healthy. Well, I think maybe, you know, what do we want to do? Like, production? Let's do combat. Units have 10% strength and melee combat. Yeah, it sounds good. Let's play. We're going to be offensive. Choose our colonists. Do we want science, food, energy, and health? Health basically being happiness or production or culture and health. Uh, so we could do aristocrats, which is, this is money. Um, energy is money. Health is happiness. So that's cool. Um, food in every city sounds really powerful at the beginning, but I kind of and it would devalue it. Considering all that it does, it just makes you have more people, and then once you have that one extra person, that person eats two food. So basically every city can support, like, maybe one more person. Let's go for, um... Let's go for... I like these two, because they have more <laughs> more numbers. Um, not really sure if energy is, is really, really powerful or not. As far as, like, buying things out. But what the hell, let's go for artists. Why not? choose a spacecraft we want the continental surveyor to reveal the coasts retrograde thrust thrusters wider area for choosing where to land first city and additional visibility around starting area no technology is needed to see petroleum geothermal and titanium resources begin with a hundred bucks and we'll reveal the alien nests well i think that the uh the potential to be able to choose our starting location just seems really powerful so let's take retrograde thrust thrusters and then what kind of cargo do we want? Hydroponics, begin with an extra population. Pioneering technology, begin with a clinic. A soldier unit, or a worker unit. Well, improvements seem pretty cool. Um, this seems like it'd be really powerful for the first like 10 turns, but then you'd probably, probably lose some of your momentum. I always seem to have difficulty getting that first building out quickly. Let's go for the, the clinic. Okay, choose a planet. We have a Terran world, a Protean world, an uh, Atlantean world. A world with very, uh, sorry, few large land, large land masses separated by oceans. A world of one ocean and one very large continuous land mass with the possibility of small coastal islands. A world of islands. Or we could go in here and we could, uh, we could set up an advanced world. I believe there is an option in here. Isn't there an option somewhere in here to, like, totally, totally customize a world? Hmm. Oh, advanced setup. There we go. Yeah, this looks very Civ 5 -y. Um, well, you know, makes sense. Anyway, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go... Oh, no, it reset the whole thing. Darn it, game. Alright, what did I choose before? Okay, went to the very end. Good, good, good. Okay, we're fine. Let's just go Terran world. It's fine. Just pick one. Let's just play the game. Play the game, Aroomba. People want to see the game. I do not ask much from my people, but I demand what is necessary for success. All must be in order if we are to face the trials ahead. They do not struggle, 
for they know I alone have been trusted to lead them to our new home. For this reason, it is I who must oversee all aspects of our mission. For me, there can be no struggle too difficult, no task too great. I must endure, not for myself, but for them. Man, that really reminds me of, like, Battlestar Galactica or something. Hello, cool, uh... I am the Advanced Integration and Simulation Resource, or Advisor. I am equipped to introduce you to the basic systems that will guide your development on this new planet. Additionally, I can provide strategic advice based on situations you encounter. How would you like me to proceed? Well, Jarvis, um, I'm thinking we'll go ahead and leave this on. We'll say new to be on Earth, and uh, we'll say ad advice only, because, yeah, seems reasonable. Select a suitable location for our people to make planet for. This will be the site of our first great city. Select a plot within <laughs> the red border to land. What are cities? I don't know what a city is. Anyway, okay, um, let's see. Now, I need to make sure that I stop pressing WASD, because that's what I... If you've played Endless Legend or Endless Space, you can move around the map with Wazd, which is, there's just minor differences. So we've got food, production, and, uh, what is that? Energy. It's not dust. It's not dust. It's not gold. It's energy. Energy. All right. So I'm thinking that we want to have a site that's going to have really just as much adjacent stuff nearby as good as possible. Now we're allowed to embark in a large area because we took those retrograde thrusters, but it doesn't mean that we're going to have a city this big to begin with. This stuff up here, if you look right here, we can see it has uh, forest, grassland, hill, and miasma. Miasma. Dwarf fortress. Um, what? Anyway, we're going to try to avoid the miasma because I think that that kills units or something. I heard something about that. You know, it's kind of funny. Take this bigger embark location and we'll probably just embark like right in the center. I want this. Fiber is here. I also got fiber here. Marsh. I want this. This is a three... I mean, we need the production. I suppose we could expand there eventually. What if we took the marsh? Building in a marsh, that's probably a bad idea, right? Is building on a hill still good? Canyon. Toggle map option. Oh, okay. You know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take uh, this spot right here. We're gonna build it in a marsh. Okay, I've selected. Go. Erxus. Praxis. Gotta say, that's a pretty cool little landing sequence. That's nice. Okay. Cidadella. 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 Alright. Victories updated. New updates in the victory log. Alright. The quest log I shows... Something that needs your attention. Okay, be quiet, Jarvis. I'm gonna call him Jarvis. His name is not Advisor. He sounds just like Jarvis from Iron Man. Alright, so we've got quests and victories. These are like victory conditions. Alright, cool. Um, domination. That's the one we're probably going to end up doing, most likely. Uh, let's see. Resource pod discovered you've discovered. A resource pod sending a unit to investigate may yield usable materials. Alright. Sounds good. We should do that. Uh, we have another resource, resource pod discovered. And a third resource pod discovered. It's kind of nice having those retrograde thrusters. So, you know what, is there like, can I, can I want to show resource icons? Okay, that's useful, yes. Artifacts? No. Yields? We don't want that on all the time. Hex grid? Well, the world looks beautiful like this without it, but I kind of, I kind of like having the grid. It just helps me plan turns and moves better. I don't know. Yeah, we'll leave them on. Trade routes? No. Hide recommendations. I have to say the interface is pretty fantastic. I'm I'm liking it so far. I will come. I mean, just one minor minor complaint. Endless Legend and Endless Space did it a little bit better because every time you're in a menu, you can right click to get out of them, and you can't seem to do that in this one. So like if you press like F5 or F4 to bring up the menu, and then right click, it does nothing. You have to, you can't just get off the menu, which is kind of kind of annoying. Anyway, we've got units. We've got a Brazilian. Brazilian, no Z, Brazilian Explorer. It has three combat strength, one expedition modules. This unit is able to construct a limited number of expeditions on tiles with artifacts, which provide great rewards once completed. Returning it to our cities will refill its supply. Well, this one looks closest. We can get there in two turns. That's kind of a cool effect. That little spinning thing. That looks nice. Uh, yeah, let's go there. Brazilian Explorer. 
What do we got to do next? Choose a research project. Now this the tech web <coughs> provides a bird's eye view of the technologies that may be discovered and how they are connected. Technologies come in two types: branches and leaves. Branches. Yes, yes. Okay. So this is definitely the the most significant change between like Civ 5 and uh, and this game. And it makes sense because you're not advancing through time. You know, it's it's all futuristic. It's in space. It's in the future. So um, having a progression doesn't necessarily make sense. So we are, we have habitation researched already. Um, it's saying 24 turns to research physics. I think that that's going to pick up pretty quick though, after we pick up a few people. So allows the vivarium and ultrasonic fence buildings, allows miasmic repulsor orbital unit. All right. Genetics allows the cyto nursery and pharma lab buildings. Cyto nursery provides science and health. And food from marshes. Well, we did our cities on a marsh. Chemistry. Let's you build a laboratory and a recycler. Plus one production from internal city or station trade routes. Okay. So, I kind of like the idea of science and production. That sounds cool. Physics. Okay, so this is where we get our archer. We can build a ranger. Unfortunately, we took combat strength uh, for melee. There's a raw material called phyraxite. That's kind of funny. Orbital coverage around the city increased by three. Interesting. Engineering. Thorium reactor and repair facility buildings. And it allows us to build a combat rover with three moves. Alright, well that sounds pretty cool. The military advisor's recommending this one. Science advisor's wanting us to go this way. Economic advisor wants us to get ecology. It's interesting. I really have no idea what would be best, so... I do want the combat rover, that sounds really fun. But... Doo -doo -doo -doo, laboratory recycler. Let's go for chemistry first. We'll do that one first. Okay, choose production for our city. Citadella, Cid Citadella, yes, that's what we're gonna call it. We will have you, we could build an old earth relic, so basically a, uh temple or whatever that thing's called monument <laughs> do you guys want to build a monument it's only 40 production one energy in maintenance and it provides us with culture a culture is uh different um the virtue screen allows you to choose the virtues that will shape your civilization you spend your accumulated culture to acquire them the yes 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 of course so we've got virtues and I, I guess we can just basically pick whatever the hell we want and uh as we unlock stuff we we get more things. So depending on which tree we want to go down, um, it's going to affect things, obviously. It's kind of how it works. So yeah, let's go ahead and build the old earth relic. Why not? And we started off with a structure. We have the headquarters, which provides us with stuff. And we also started with a free clinic because we chose it. So we got one extra science and one extra health. Our health is currently at stable. 20% speed towards outpost growth. Basic needs of your people are met, and they rise to the challenges of living on this new planet. So, I know that you get, you get like, happiness bonuses if you get really high health, so we're going to want to try to do that. Um, it's recommending that we build a worker. We probably want to queue one of those up, but we'll build the old Earth Relic first. How much would it cost to purchase one of these things? 270 and we have zero. That's that's not very much. All right. Um, let's get off this menu. I keep trying to right click to escape the menu. Next turn. What's this now? Mandira. The temple doors of the protectorate are open. Oh, hi, India. Okay. Uh, declare war. No. Um. Goodbye. It's fine. So apparently we automatically learned where her capital was. Resource pods were sent ahead of our journey and contained valuable materials from Old Earth. Send a unit onto the resource pod to see what it contains. How does unit movement work? No, okay. Alright, so we've got our guy. Something that needs your attention. You need to be quiet, Jarvis. Uh, we're gonna go check out that relic. You found a portable reactor and fuel source inside the resource pod. You are able to activate it and dis activate it despite some damage from landing. Fighting with 40 energy. Very nice. So we got some energy. It's good. Uh, we got another one down here. It's going to take four turns, or we could go all the way over here to this one, which is seven turns. All right. 
Now, the Explorer... Can we really do anything else with him? I don't think we can. If you wish to communicate with another colony, you may click on their city. Their city banner. There's a shortcut to talk to them. Alright, great. You have a new quest available. You have a new quest available. Throughout the game, your actions will trigger different quests that can unlock bonuses for your... Alright, that's cool. Okay, so we got our portable reactor quest log. Okay, so here's our quests and victories, so it's different. Our sponsor had the foresight to send resource pods ahead. We need to find two, and we've found one. Okay, so in four turns, we'll have that done. And uh, we're good to go. Next turn. Ooh, it's a bad guy. Major defeat. Oh. Alright, cool. Alright. Approximate damage inflicted. So if we had our explorer attack this thing, we'd be attacking over a river. My gosh, it's just exactly the same as uh, Civ 5. Combat mechanics look the exact same. Anyway, let's just move on. One of our One units... Of our units has walked into a cloud of strange <laughs> alien miasma. This miasma is toxic and will damage our units and equipment if they remain here. Until we understand this substance better, we should avoid it if possible. I do want to know how the hit point unit stat works. Is it... Okay. When fully health healthy, all combat units have 100. Okay, so it's it's not like Civ 4, it's like Civ 5 where they have 100 health instead of 10, which is good. Uh, yeah, you're going to go there. And uh, apparently you lose, I think it's 10% per turn for being in, an, in a miasmic location. Where can we see your health? Should we be able to see it? Now, I know you can still like right click on these things to uh there's a way to pull up the civilopedia. Ah, we'll figure it out later. Okay, well I'm gonna take a break here. Um if you like this video, you want to see more civilization beyond earth on the channel, then uh do leave a comment, like the video, it helps me out a lot, and uh it helps out with things like YouTube search results and ranking and helping other people to find the channel. So thank you for watching. I do look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you again soon.